Hello, my name is Iran and welcome to my All 20 Master series. This is part 5, specifically part 5.6, where we talk about the sidebar. This part is about the settings. If you're wondering why in part 6 I'm talking about the 7th tab of the sidebar, it's because the 6th one, called the collection, is very complicated and I'm leaving that one to the end. Most of what you find here is for everyone. So you have your VTTS tools and settings right here. I've already discussed this if you install the extension, which I recommend both for guides and players. Everyone has the exit game, which is a nicer way of exiting the game instead of just closing the tab. And if you want to go back to Roll20. Guys have this button here, which says rejoin as player, which lets them see the game as a player would. Do note that both exit game and rejoin player take some time to load. Your display name is right here. The display name is what is shown at the bottom of the screen right here where everyone can see your name, and this will also display in chat when you're typing something. So I recommend you do something that is relevant. For example, I usually type GM, and don't forget to click Save Name, and this will update the button. If you're a player, I also recommend you type in something that will help your GM notice things that are supposed to be quick. For example, in my D&D game, I recommend that everyone use their character name, type in their AC, their DC if they're a spellcaster or a monk or something like that, and their passive perception, because these are the things that the GM asks for most of the time. And the, if you do this and save, you can see they're right here at the bottom of the screen, and all the GM needs to do is look down, see the name, and know exactly what they want without asking. If it's a game you're unfamiliar with, if the GM is unfamiliar with you, you can also type in your actual name. Here you have some more settings. These are also available for both guides and players. You can set the master music volume. This is a personal thing. If the GM puts on music that, you th that they think is appropriate but you think it's too loud, you can just lower the volume right here. Also, there are various other options here. I recommend you use advanced shortcuts. It makes the running the game easier. I will explain later when we talk about the map. The chat beep is for your personal preference if you want the chat to beep if you're not looking at it. Some people find it annoying. Some people also like 3D dice. I don't. And you can set to see or not the chat avatars and whether you want to see timestamps of whether, when the chat message was sent. I recommend you do not set token actions alphabetically. I will get into it when we talk about NPC sheets and PC sheets. And if your game is lagging, you can turn off animated graphics. It's a new feature from World 20 just in the past several months where you can put in images that uh, are animated and give you a lot more to do inside the game. But I will talk more about that when we talk about maps and tokens. You can change the scroll value. I recommend you still use scroll to pan. Maybe it's because I'm old school, I've gotten used to it. You scroll up and down to move up and down from the map. You hold shift to scroll left and right, and you hold alt to zoom in and out. I've gotten used to it. This is how I prefer. You can switch it up and see how you like it. Guides also have the option to clear the current chat log. If you click it and go back to the chat, you can see everything is empty. This does not delete the chat, it just clears the log from this session. And when you come back, it'll be as it was. You can also set the color of the bars on top of tokens and where the markers on the tokens will appear. This is a personal preference. I prefer it to be like that and use the markers on the left because I use a uh, green for health, blue for armor, and red for any class resource that you might want. You can also set the avatar size of the avatars down in the corner. You can have it names only or up to large icons. This will set the image set by the player for their avatar in Roll24 for their account, unless they have video on, in that case you will see their video. Now let's talk about chat tech. Chat tech means whether you run audio and or video through Roll20. I recommend against it because it's not very stable even with their new tech and you don't want your game to lag because of video and you don't want your whole 20 page if it gets stuck which happens a lot to jam up the entire uh, conversation what i usually recommend is you turn this off and use another application like discord to use chat and video or voice another way of doing it if you like things in front of you and not on another screen like i usually have it then you can set your chat tech to roll 20 Set the audio and video input to whatever you want, for example, the camera I'm using and the microphone I'm recording from, but set this to broadcast video only and receive video only, and then, of course, click reconnect to update the chat settings. And this currently doesn't work because I'm using the camera to record, but uh, if you use another application like Discord for audio, you can still see video inside Roll20, and if Roll20 gets stuck, you still have audio on, and when you reconnect, you'll have video again but my preference is turning it off and setting player avatar to names only. That's it for the settings. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.